Hi, and welcome back. The quantizer is an essential tool if you want to create melodic sequences from voltages within your modular system. But it's a creative tool that can be used in other interesting ways as well. First, I'll explain what a quantizer does and how it works. Then, we'll have a quick look at the dub for A156, which is the quantizer we'll be using in this video. Finally, we'll dive into a couple of patch ideas and creative uses. If you'd like to support this video series, or you want to get access to the PDF sheets of the illustrations I use in this and many of my other videos, have a look at my Patreon. But now, let's dive right in. To understand the quantizer, we actually have to start with a quick look at the oscillator and the 1V per octave input. On every good Eurorack modular oscillator, you'll find a 1V per octave input. The output frequency of the oscillator responds in a very precise and predictable way to voltages you feed to the 1V per octave input. The term 1V per octave actually explains exactly how precise. If you take an oscillator without any input and you would tune its frequency to output a C, it would still do so if you would feed a 0 volt signal to the 1 volt per octave input. However, if you would feed the oscillator an input of exactly 1 volt, it would output a C again, but this time exactly 1 octave above the initial frequency. And that's not just true for the first volt. For every added volt you feed it, the resulting frequency would be 1 octave higher. This standardized scale gives you the possibility to send certain voltages to your oscillator and get it to output the exact node you want. However, apart from the fact that it could be hard to measure an exact volt, a huge problem lies in between those voltages. If you would take a slowly rising looping envelope between 0 and 2 volt, for example, and you would feed it to your oscillator, the pitch would just simply slide up, for example, from a C to a C2. If you want your oscillator to only output frequencies that match a regular Western scale, you would need to feed it the exact voltages that correspond with the nodes you like to use. This is where the quantizer comes in. You can feed a quantizer any kind of voltage you like, again, a slowly rising envelope for example. The quantizer will continuously check the incoming voltage, but only output steady voltages that correspond with the chosen scale. For example, if you set your quantizer to a chromatic scale, matching all the notes you would find in an octave on a piano for example, the quantizer will divide every incoming rising volt into a 12-step staircase, picking an option closest to the incoming voltage. This will not result in a slowly rising frequency, but frequencies that hold until the incoming voltage is closer to another division. We can go more in depth with this, but I hope it's clear for now. Let's have a quick look at the quantizer we'll be using today. The Dubfa A156 is a straightforward module that holds two quantizers in one. Both quantizers can be used independently, however, they both follow the same settings when it comes to the choice of scales and transpose functions. Each quantizer has a CV input, this is where you feed the control voltage you want to use to create melodies and the CV output. This is the quantized output you feed to an oscillator. To get more rhythmic control, there is a trigger input. If you use this input, the quantizer will hold a certain output value until it receives a trigger. Then it will check the incoming CV and output a new quantized value based on that. Finally, there's a trigger output, which produces a short trigger whenever the quantized CV output changes value. With these three switches here, you can select which scale you want to restrain the quantizer's output to. You can select a full chromatic scale or a major or minor scale. Within the major and minor scale, you can choose to output the full scale or use some options to restrict the output to a specific chord. Finally, there is a common transpose input right here. Let's start with the basics and use a quantizer to create some melodies. If you have a modular sequencer that outputs linear control voltages, you can send its sequence to a quantizer to turn it into a quantized sequence. 
Send that to an oscillator and use the quantizer's trigger output to trigger an envelope to shape the filter and VCA in a simple voice. However, in a modular system you can feed all kinds of voltages into a quantizer to create melodies. You can just use noise or a random voltage to create completely unpredictable melodies. In this case, you have to expand your patch with a modular clock to trigger the quantizer in order to create tempo synced melodic changes. In the previous example, you heard a lot of bass notes being repeated. That's because the dub for A156 does not respond to negative voltages. So, if you feed the quantizer a bipolar voltage, like the random voltage we are using here, all voltages below zero will result in the same bass note. If you want to use the full range of a bipolar voltage, you have to use a mixer and mix in a bit of offset voltage to bring the entire voltage into the positive range. Have a look at my video about modular utilities if you'd like to learn more about attenuating, mixing and offset. You can also experiment with looping envelopes or free running LFOs. Here's a simple melody created with a looping rising envelope over some drums. It stays interesting for a longer time because the envelope isn't synced to a clock. You can make this setup as complex as you like. For example, you can take that same looping envelope but add another one that is triggered by a slower division coming from a clock divider. Then add a random source and send all three signals to a mixer. Now, just by mixing the signals by hand, you can create variations in your patterns. From using the tempo synced envelope, to the free running one, to complete random. And, of course, interesting mixtures of those signals. This is very interesting when you're performing longer ambient or drone pieces. On top of that, you can experiment with the transpose input. You can use another clock division and send that to the transpose input on the quantizer. But it's also interesting to send it a manually triggered envelope through an attenuator for more hands-on performances. With the dub for A156 offering two quantizers in one, it's quite possible to create interesting performances without any sequencers. Here are a few fragments of live shows I performed earlier and uploaded on the Monotrail music channel. Have a look at these videos if you'd like a full walkthrough of a patch that I used in similar performances. Besides creating melodies, I quickly want to mention some other tricks as well, starting with triggers. Because the A156 offers a trigger in and output, you can experiment with those, even if you're not interested in melodies. For example, a simple slow random voltage into the CV output will result in an outcoming trigger whenever the voltage changes enough. Now, the quantizer functions as a random trigger generator. If you send a random voltage through a mixer so you can attenuate the random signal, 
and again mix it with offset if you like, you can really control the amount of random triggers the quantizer generates. From zero, when there is no input, to occasionally, with just a tiny amount of random voltage, to just a massive string of random triggers. If you like to create tempo sync triggers, you can use the same setup, but add a modular clock to the trigger input of the quantizer. In this example, I'll use a 16 step clock to trigger the quantizer and use the quantizer's trigger out to trigger a hi-hat module. Again, I can use the mixer to dial in the amount of tempo synced random triggers. Finally, instead of using the CV output of your quantizer to create melodies, you can use it as a CV source within your modular. The quantizer can function somewhat similar to a sample and hold module. For example, feed it noise and a clock source to create a tempo synced step sequence. Or use the looping rising envelope we used earlier to create a staircase signal. Remember to add offset again if you want to use the full dynamic range of a bipolar signal. You can make this patch as complex as you like. For example, you can use a setup similar to the one we created before, with the two envelopes and a random source. But instead of feeding the result to an oscillator, we send it to the filter in that voice. Now we can use the mixer to mix and control patterns that change the dynamic of the sound instead of the pitch. When using the quantizer for CV, you can use the switches to set the scale to determine the size of the steps. A chromatic scale will result in more detailed steps than a limited chord. If you'd like to learn more about controlling a modular system with external sequencers, have a look at my video about the Cork SQ1. And if you'd like to see more modular content from me, smash that like, subscribe and bell button. But that's it for now, thanks for watching and see you next time.